Well, good morning. I am loving the Lord on today, and I am so grateful and I am so thankful to be before you. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to take a, a little time because I, I'm my spirit is turning as it relates to uh, King Corona. And uh, I wanted to say a little bit more uh, about King Corona as it relates to my parenthetical insertion, uh, because uh, I, I just don't think that it's something that we should just mention one time and put it away, especially as we monitor how the devil is kicking up so much dirt, uh, dust. He is on it. So um, it would be a failure of the church to just glance over uh, the potential of the power of God, uh, the blood of Christ, and um, that commission that he has given us to do in this time and in this hour. So um, I want you to briefly go to uh, 1 Samuel and that's 17 and 26. And I want to read a very uh, familiar passage of scripture. And that's 1 Samuel 17 and 26. Uh, and it says, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army or armies of the living God? I want you to go to one other spot with me and that's we're going to go to um, uh, 2 Timothy and the first chapter, um, verse number five, 2 Timothy 1 and 5. Just these two scriptures, and, and then we're just going to say a few things, and I'm out. And here in verse number five, it says, Paul is talking to Timothy now. And he says, when I call to remembrance the unfined faith, that is in thee, this, this faith that's relentless, that is inside of you, he says, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and then in thy mother, Eunice. And then he says, and I, I am persuaded that it's in you also. <laughs> and, and God's word is always blessed. And so, I want to just glance over this subject matter today, uh, and it's going to be titled Corona Who? So I want to talk to you from the subject, Corona Who? So, so we look at David, and David, he approaches a situation, and in this situation, uh, he gets here, and it's this this giant of a man, this giant of a situation, this mountain of a problem, and he is going through, the, the word armies here is, is defined as, uh, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the Lord? And armies means here in the Hebrew, uh, this is the, the meaning of it in the Hebrew, every row. And if that ain't what we got going on right now, is is Corona just wiping out every row in military? That's what they had. They had every row, they had every rank, and every battle line. Basically, what he's saying here is just going through everything, just going through everything. So he says here, he says, who 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 is this person? That's going through all the army, all the structures of the Lord. Everything that God put in place. Who, who, who is this? I want to know. And so then um, in 2 Timothy, Paul reminds 
Timothy of his lineage. He says, not only are you of the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, you are, you are of a royal priesthood. He says, but your grandmother Lois, she had something that was, that was outstanding. It, it was the faith that she had that, 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 that Timothy, I need to remind you, that's the faith, that's the stock that you come from. And, and that's what is needed in this time. And he says, not only that, he says, your, 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 your mother, some of y'all will say mama. Your mother, she had the same thing. And then he goes on to say, and I be doggone. He says, if I don't see what the cross had that delivered to your grandmother Lois, which delivered to your mother Eunice, and now you, you got the same thing. You've been bit too. Ain't that a trip? So, so my grandmother, when I look at this whole thing, I, I, I reflect back. I understand that I'm born again and, and bought with a price. I know that Jesus paid it all for me on the cross. But, but, but there were some others that went before me that were examples and there were some role models that was in my life. And I, and I just wanted to get on today just to testify a little bit because I, I just believe that, that this is very critical to the reason why we are wavering so much in the church, the reason why we are so fretful, we are so fearful, and God has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. But, 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 but we're not seeing it so much, but we are pronouncing and holding Corona up really high. In making it the king, as it were, the king, Corona. But but I just wanted to come on and I wanted to tell you a little bit about where I come from. I wanted to reflect a little bit about the Jesus that was passed on to me down through the generations. Because I remember, I remember my 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 grandmother, Rosa Hope. And um, Rosa Hope was like a David. And the reason why I read that scripture is because she, when I, when I read that, it makes me think about her. And then when I read in Timothy, it makes me think about her as it relates to me. And I said, if God can do it like that, then he can do it like that, like that now through me. Because it's been passed down. The blood has continued to fall. Even to myself. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. And so I remember when, when Mama Rose, when, um, I, I, you know, I, when I think about her, I, I say, you know, if I've never seen faith walking, faith walking. Now, uh, I was under a, a good uh, man of God and he was an anointed an anointed man of God, and 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 I cherish all that time. But there's something that sticks out to me now that that didn't come from nothing else that was that I saw, that I recognized, that I heard, that was preached to me, that was taught to me. I I I, I watched Grandma, and I saw faith walking. I, I wasn't so much that I saw faith being expounded upon but I saw faith walking and as I saw it and I said what manner of woman is this now at that time I didn't know how to say that but in this time when I reflect back because God was showing me then for such a time as now I, I can say now what what manner of woman was that a, a woman that was not full of the word that we get today <clears throat> she didn't have the education she may not have even been able to read you know really well I don't I don't know about that part uh writing reading writing and all that but 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 she she didn't have the the hermeneutics as we have it today she wasn't able to exegete text properly come on she wasn't she wasn't able to do that 
all y'all theologians that's out there and, and you you talk, you know, you you this this Euro Western way of doing things that, that is powerless. Powerless. And and you got your you got the nerve to to critique and and tell people now that it really wasn't like that. Or hermeneutically, hermeneutically speaking, and and exegetical speaking. It, it, you know, this is, we'll, we'll let the text speak back to you. The text needs to ask the question. And if the text is not asking the question, then you don't ask it. The devil is a lie. Because when God is on the scene and God is speaking, he, he supersedes exegetical, uh, the exegetical process. He, he supersedes all the hermeneutics and, and all the biblical uh Addiction and, and all that stuff that is out there. Oh, I know. I respect it. I've learned it and I use it. I get all that. But I ain't talking about that today because all that's that's fine and good. That's that's well. But I'm talking about something that wasn't available during the time when when my grandmother was coming along and she was talking about the Holy Ghost. See, see, we talking about coronavirus, but my grandmother was talking about the Holy Ghost without exegeting the text, without uh, a grand audience and, and members and, and giving a renowned preach word and all that. She, she, she wasn't doing it. See, see, my grandmother, as I recall, I, re, I remember, I remember God helped me today. I remember when I was 23 years old. And and as I was working at the meal, it was about four o'clock in the evening and I passed out. I felt it coming, but I didn't I couldn't stop it. I didn't know what had happened. And I passed out. They came and they got me. They took me to the uh, the little nurse dispensary area uh, on 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 site there. And so they called uh, 911. I guess that's what it was back then. That's been a few years back now and uh the the squad came and got me and so the sky the, when the squad came and got me i i kind of remember when i was coming to myself a little bit i was in the elevator at that time it was called mansfield general hospital and i was in the elevator on a gurney and i had two or three uh white jackets around me that, I don't know what they were, nurses, doctors, I, I'm not sure. And uh, I remember one guy saying, well, you know, heart attacks are becoming more and more uh, prevalent. They're, they're, it's, it's something that we are, we are seeing more often now than we've ever seen before. So they were getting to the point to be accepted, ex ex to accept uh, this, this new thing of, uh, you know, heart attacks at, at an early age. And so I remember the guy looking over at me and he says, well, sir, I, I, we don't know yet, but it appears as if you had a heart attack. He says, you know, according to your, your enzyme counts and your blood count and all this, and I don't know how they got all that so quick. I, I'm not even sure at that point where I was in the process at the hospital at this time no, I was in the elevator getting ready to they was getting ready to wheel me into intensive care and so I don't know how it got to my grandmother but but I remember oh we got Jesus help me I remember my grandmother she she came through the hospital doors and uh, I'm just I'm just I, I know that there was doors there and, and I can see her in the spirit journeying on up to uh, the area where the intensive care was at. And so when she got there, she she bypassed the protocol. See, when you got the Holy Ghost, you don't stop because uh, they have this system in place that says, you know, this is where you rest at. This is what you do here. I understand they got protocols out for coronavirus and all that. And I also understand that uh, God's word and his blood transcends all of that. So they don't let you into the hospital to the place where you need to be. You ain't got to be. All you got to do is speak the word. Grand Grandmama, Grandmama Rose, Grandmama Rose. Thank you, Jesus. She came into uh, the room where I was at and she stopped at the door because they was trying to get her out. They, they had they, they had me hooked up and, and they was 
you know, getting ready to do whatever they was going to do to me. But I remember locking in on, on, granny's, on granny's eyes. And grandma said these words to me. Two phrases she said to me. She says, baby, ain't nothing wrong with your heart. Woo, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And then she says, and you ain't going to die. Two things that she said to me. Two things that was powerful. And when I looked at it, she had on, you know, back then, because they, you know, they, 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 they looked holy, right? They wore the, the long dresses and the knee highs. When, when Grandma Rose came through there, she had the knee highs on, but the knee highs had fell down towards her ankles. And she, she walked through the door. She had on some, some house shoes. She wasn't concerned about how she looked coming there. She had put a wig on, and I could tell that the wig wasn't just right. But when she came there, all she wanted to do was get to where the problem was. And when she got there, she says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What, what, what is a heart condition? What is a heart attack? And all I'm saying, I'm raising this today just to encourage you on the way and, and for us to, to go back to the old landmark to say, wait a minute. I'm hearing about the virus and I'm hearing about this and I'm hearing about the numbers and I understand this, that, and the other. But I know a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh that has been given to me, to us. God has given us power to overcome this thing. And so I just came on today just to, just to encourage you, to let you know that the worst really is over. I don't care about the coronavirus. If, if, if we get it as saints of God, as men and women of God, children of God, that there's a blood that covers us, that can filter out any virus, any poison. There's a poison vein. There's a poison vein built inside of us. We have an immune system that supersedes vaccines and all the stuff that they would come up with, all the witty inventions, the masks, the social dis distancing. We have a blood that, that was shed and that we have been bought by a price. And, and in Isaiah 53, it talks about the healing by his stripes. We are healed by his stripes. We were healed. New Testament. And so I just want to encourage you today, my brothers and my sisters, to tell you to keep on keeping on. And that the worst really is over. And that we ain't got nothing to look for but the best. The best is yet to come. Quality, quality. Our quality of life is not going down. Our quality of life is on the up. It's on the uptick. And as a result of that, of that, you are going to decree. You are going to not decree. You're going to declare the decree. As my pastor would say. You're going to declare the decree of the Lord on your life on your family's life, on loved ones' lives, lives. You're going to do that in Jesus' name. And so I just want you to be blessed today. I want you to know that I love you and ain't nothing that you can do about it. And keep the faith. It's all about faith. I'm telling you now that God is only has only allowed this to strengthen our faith as men and women in the body of Christ. Men and women of God in the body of Christ. He's coming back for a strong church. A strong church. As Kirk Franklin would say, we need a strong God. And here's the issue with that song. God ain't never been weak. But, but you need the strength of God. I understand what he was saying. You need the strength of God to be strong in you. That's what we have. Be encouraged, my brothers and my sisters. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. I love you, be blessed, and I'm praying for you.
in Jesus' name.